Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show's all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of mastering your mind. Mastering your mind is one of the most important tools you will ever learn. Our minds are one of the most important tools we possess, and it can either help you to attain success and optimum health and happiness, or it can lead you to the depths of failure and despair. The great news is we have 100% control of our mind and we have the ability to train it to work in our favor and program it for success. When we don't take control of our minds, we let it roam on autopilot, letting external factors or situations determine our happiness. Understanding that we can use our minds to serve us and steer us in a positive direction is essential for taking the reins back and becoming the master of your mind and your thoughts. So how do we go about doing this? Have you ever noticed that two people can be in the same situation, yet one person is optimistic and the other person is worried and stressed? The key is perspective and training your mind to see the positive in every situation. Training our minds to see the glass half full rather than half empty can turn any situation into a positive learning experience, which is essential for developing a winning mindset. Being conscious of filling our minds with positivity daily with self-affirmations, positive self-talk, and avoiding negativity are all steps to training our minds to work in our favor. As Buddha quotes, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. Stay tuned coming up after the break. And you know, unlike other Bollywood actors, you've been in a number of international films. So what was your favorite international movie to act in and why? I had great experience working in Bandit like Beckham. It was a great, it was my first English language film. Mm -hmm. And I had a wonderful time because I was working with brilliant actors like Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence when I did Silver Linings Playbook. Mm -hmm. From an idle point of view, uh, my uh, Robert De Niro to be able to screen, uh, share the screen space with somebody like him who, on whom I have I had done a, a paper during my um, drama school days, I did a paper on him on his taxi driver and mean streets. And then finally, life takes you to a situation where you are actually uh, working with him is the most memorable experience that I've had till date. Next on the show, we have one of Bollywood's most notable actors, Anupam Kher. Anupam has acted in over 500 films and has recently launched his new book, Your Best Day Is Today, and his podcast, Anupam Kher, available on iHeartRadio Podcasts. Anupam, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am fine. It's 10 o'clock in the night in Mumbai, and I think for you, it must be 11.30. It is. It's 11.30 a.m. It's, it's bright and early here. Well, not early, but it's the afternoon. <laughs> it's really a pleasure having you on the show today. My, my list of Bollywood stars is growing. So far, I've had Priyanka wow. Chopra, Abhishek Bachchan, my uncle Denzel Smith, who's also a Bollywood actor, and now you. So it's quite an honor to have you. How oh, wonderful. I'm very happy to be on this show. Thank you. So you're one of Bollywood's most notable actors. You've starred in more than 500 films. So let's bring it back to the beginning. When did you develop your love for acting and what was your first major big break? So I come from a small town, uh, which is up north in Shimla. It's called Shimla. It's in under the foothills of Himalaya. And I come from a small uh, family in terms of poor family. And uh, the only thing when you are very poor is that you dream a lot. You dream about wanting to be famous, wanted to be successful. And, uh, but I was not good at studies. I was not good at sports. And uh, the only thing I was good at was I was good at mimicking people. I used mm. to mimic my teachers, my principal, my, my parents, my grandparents. And it was fun uh, doing that. And that's where I think the first seed of acting must have got planted. But then I went to a proper training in the Department of Indian Theatre in Chandigarh. Then I went to drama school in Mumbai and finally landed up in, um, in Mumbai on the 3rd of June 1981. So I almost going to complete um, almost 40 years in Mumbai. My first break came in my first film called Saranj. Mm -hmm. which in English means the essence. Mm -hmm. uh, Saranj uh, was uh, 
a big break for me. I was 28 and I was playing a 65 year old man's <laughs> role. Yeah, but it was a great, great, great film. It launched me as an actor in the best possible manner. And uh, if I have survived these 40 years in the <laughs> cinema field, it's because my first role was that. Mm -hmm. And you know, unlike other Bollywood actors, you've been in a number of international films, uh, Golden Globe nominated films like Bend It Like Beckham, Silver Linings Playbook, just to name a few. So what was your favorite international movie to act in and why? I think it's too early to answer that question. Maybe I'll answer that question after 20 years when I think <laughs> that I'm maybe going to hang my boots because of so memory loss or something like that, not otherwise. Mm -hmm. But I had great experience working in Bandit Like Beckham. It was a great, it was my first English language film. Mm -hmm. And I had a wonderful time because I was working with brilliant actors like Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence when I did Silver Linings Playbook. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed equally doing Hotel Mumbai or um, the big sick mm -hmm. but yes uh, from an idle point of view uh, my uh, Robert De Niro to be able to screen uh, share the screen space with somebody like him who on whom I have I had done a, a paper during my um, drama school days I did a paper on him on his taxi driver and mean streets and then finally life takes you to a situation where you are actually uh, working with him is the most memorable experience that I've had till date. But mm -hmm. I have a feeling that I will be having great experiences in the future also. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you definitely will. <laughs> I want to talk about your book. I have it right here. Uh, mm -hmm. Your best day is today. And I, I really love this title of the book. So talk to us about the symbol. Even I have for it. You. I also <laughs> oh, have it. Oh, we're both matching. <laughs> yeah, we're both matching. We both have the same book. Let's talk about the title because it really sticks out to me. It's very inspirational. So let, let's talk about the symbolism for you uh, for this title of the book. So I wrote this book during pandemic, during lockdown. And uh, it's about my own account of what I went through or what I did during this uh, this pandemic time and how I wanted to how, uh, look at the silver linings during these dark clouds. I'm an eternal optimist and for me to be able to find what do I sort of see which makes me positive, which makes me compassionate, which makes, makes me optimistic in this time. Mm -hmm. So when I finished writing this book by September, I started writing it in April. Me and my publisher, which is Hare House Publishers, we've been, we were brainstorming what should we call this book? Mm -hmm. Because uh, we came. My first book was called "The Best Thing About You Is You." Mm -hmm. My second book was "Lessons Life Taught Me Unknowingly," and this was my third book. And I was not planning to write it. And then I remembered that when we were kids, when I was in fifth grade and my brother was in fourth grade, my mother used to take us on foot to drop us uh, at the gate of the school. And at that uh, school school gate, she used to say it in Kashmiri in my Kashmiri language, Chon Azuk Dechu Sahaniko John, which which translated into, she will tell me and my brother, your best days today. Mm. So we used to feel, oh my God, now mother has wished us our best day now, whether we are good at studies or not, whether we are good at sports or not, but it is going to be our best day. So I thought also the pandemic, the lockdown taught us that we keep planning things in future that we will do this after one month, we will do this day after tomorrow or this is what we, but lockdown made us realize that this moment that you are having that like you and I are having a chat is the most important moment. And uh, that's a lesson which uh, I want to share with my readers, with other people that we should not be running fast nowhere. We should not be sort of trying to um, plan things. I know planning sometimes help us, but one small virus has made us feel the importance of present, the importance mm -hmm. of now. Yeah. And that's why this title uh, has come up there. Mm -hmm. I love it. And you know, of course, the lockdown has been difficult for everybody. But especially in India, you know, the lo it's been a lot more severe and people have been home for months and months. I know my grandmother was home for almost a year. So, you know, what kind of challenges did you face personally during this lockdown? And how did you get through those moments? But I personally feel that the India has dealt with lockdown and pandemic much better than so many other countries mm. uh, because our immune system is already good. Mm. I can understand my mother and your grandmother uh, not able to go out because of the old age because you can get infected faster. Your immune system is low. 
but um, the fact that I had never taken an off in, in this uh, so many years as an actor for me to be not doing anything for so many months was a strange thing to be sitting at home mm-hmm. uh, but that's what also brought me uh, my book uh, that's what uh, made me feel creative about it and I, I also took a pause in life um, we are back in full form now we are as if lockdown had not taken place we have to be careful i think we need to be uh, smart about it but um, we did observe uh, the rules of lockdown the social distancing the putting up the mask a little more seriously than most of the other uh, countries have done and with the vaccine coming out now two vaccines coming out of india uh, we are in a better situation hopefully uh, but still i think people like my mother has to be careful whether she is able to go out or not uh, so so that's that's there but overall i think we live in situations where we don't necessarily take care of whether we are having a mineral water or not so our immune system is much better i would like to say that mhm i completely agree you know what is one thing that you've learned about yourself during this lockdown and covid because i feel like everybody's learned something about themselves because they've had a lot more time so what's something you've learned so i really learned that i'm not as impatient as people think i am <laughs> and uh, i had my patience at display throughout this lockdown period i also learned that it's it's important to have a pause in life mm, and also yeah. learned like so many other people that you only need three things in life basically you need to be close to your family your parents your husband wife or your children second thing that you need most important is essential goods just some food and some uh, set of clothes and the third thing which is very important is wifi the rest of it is all luxury uh, i learned that it is no point storing things mm-hmm. uh, we clutter our belongings we clutter our cupboards and we clutter our uh, almiras we clutter clutter of the stuff and our mind with so many unnecessary things and um, so we learned i learned so many things i learned that i i can actually iron clothes very well <laughs> uh, yeah i i learned that i can write uh means i used to write earlier also but this time i write out of necessity i felt that you see the point is when i'm fearful of something when i have to do difficult scenes when i have to do scenes which have long lines of mind i write them down mm-hmm. so similarly this book helped me a lot and compassion is the most important thing that i learned the mm-hmm. quality to be able to listen we don't mm-hmm. listen we were we are we before this we were we were so, we are so busy we are pretending to be so busy mm-hmm. sometimes we are just trying to sort of give ourselves this false notion of being important mm-hmm. that it's important to listen to people it's important to communicate with people mm-hmm. yeah i think that's very true i think this has definitely taught us to slow down cuz as you said everything was so fast paced and everyone's had a time to you know slow down reflect and you know also work on their hobbies and things they love and learn things about themselves what did you learn I learned I already knew this about myself but I learned that I was even more determined than I thought I was because for my show it was very challenging in the beginning our studio was closed so I had to film it in my basement with the green screen myself and um I learned all the tools and I was determined I brought I took content out there every week and um people would be like how did you do that yourself how did you film a show <laughs> you know book guys also also be the host but I was determined so I learned that I think when you are when you are when you are in a situation where you have to test your capabilities that's the best time to do that yeah uh, you you find new horizons only when you are pushed to the wall exactly so that's one thing i learned that if if i set my mind to it i will do it no matter what so that was a exactly. good thing that i learned and i also took time to reflect and also spend time with family so it, it's been a actually a, a year of growth for me the last year and this year has has really been a year of growth i want to talk about your new podcast i know you have a new podcast coming out so tell us about it well it's out it's on on uh, on i heart radio uh, i heart uh, podcast uh, uh, we, you can find it there it is on apple it's uh, on spotify it's called anupam cares mm-hmm. uh, c a r e s it's 14 episodes every episode is between 15 to uh, 18 minutes uh, it's basically uh, about uh, the positivity that i wanted to spread 
or I want to spread in the world, the warmth that I want to spread, the, the togetherness, the diversity, uh, so the compassion that I want to spread, and it is mostly delivered from my own life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, when you come from a small town, you have lo- amazing stories of compassion and amazing, amazing stories of of goodness that you have witnessed all your growing years. So it's about that. And then the producers have taken such amazing uh, stories of other people from various walks of life uh, from the world, world and put them together. Just suppose these two stories. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so basically, and I'm I'm glad to say that share that it's people are liking it. I, I hope your viewers and your listeners are also going to check. It's called Anupam Cares. I wanted to play around with my name, uh, so it, it's it's worked out well. I these are various stories, like my childhood stories, like a fairy tale stories. I told you in the beginning, my grandfather used to say when you're. I asked him one day. I said, Grandfather, we are very poor. Why are we happy? Mm. And he said, when you are very poor, the cheapest luxury available is happiness. Mm. So, mm. so these are the things that I spoke about, about my first play, about my first life. Then the last chapter is about my father, who at the time, just 20 or 18 minutes before he passed away, he whispered two words in my, in my ears and they were, live life. Mm. So for a man who was going to die in another 20 minutes, for him to say the last two words as live life, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great story. So based on these stories, there are so many other stories of people who are so inspirational, who are so motivational. Their stories, their small little uh, anecdotes uh, make this, uh, this uh, podcast a little uh, interesting and uh, inspirational also. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, it sounds very inspirational um, and I for sure will be listening to it. I'm sure our viewers will be because, you know, especially right now, uh, inspiration is much needed. You know, it's 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 kind of dark times in the world. And yes. um, I think a little boost of inspiration goes a long also way. Also, when you when you when you when you listen to the other people telling about their hardships, their difficulties and yet staying positive, it, it's a very it has a very um, uh, infectious uh, effect on other people. Mm-hmm. I feel goodness is very infectious. I think honesty is very infectious. I think to be uh, being cool is being inspirational. Being cool is being honest. Be- is being cool is being punctual. I think we can do- give so much love to people. We we need love. In this time, we discover that what cures us is compassion and love and hope. Mm-hmm. So the, the the Anupam Cares is a podcast which gives you hope that you live in a good, better world. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we are constantly told that we live in a dangerous world. We live in a uh, world which believes in uh, negativity. But we need to also, as individuals, take the responsibility of spreading the message of hope and goodness. Mm-hmm. I think that's very true and you know our show is about inspiration showcasing people like you have been who have been very successful and inspirational so I want to ask you I always like to ask my viewers you know what do you think the key to your success has been because you've obviously been extremely successful so what do you think has kind of led you there because I'm not scared of failure Mm. You are successful as a person, not necessarily always as a professional, because somebody is better doing better than you as a professional constantly. Mm-hmm. You, I can think that, oh my God, why am I not Brad Pitt? But how many people can be Anupam Kher? <laughs> I think uh, at a very young age, my father told me that failure is an event, never a person. Mm-hmm. I'm, at number two, I'm an eternal optimist. Number three, I'm hardworking and honest. Mm-hmm. There is no alternate to hard work and honesty, but never giving up is the best way to live. Mm-hmm. I never give up. It, it doesn't. You. It does appear that I have a very successful career, but I've seen ups and downs, thousands of ups and downs, like any other person in real life has. Uh, it, our perspective of ups and downs changes from person to person, but I never give up, and I am. I am not scared of failure, and I'm an eternal optimist. For me, the ultimate definition of optimism is nothing is all wrong. Even a clock that has stopped running is correct twice a day. Mm-hmm. 
I think that's great advice. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It's it's been of a course. pleasure, and you know you're yeah, such yeah. an inspiration and so positive, and it's infectious. So thank you, and please come back soon. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and give my love to your family. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.